What is up everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. Um, this is 2018 exam one, physics 207, electricity and magnetism. Um, thank you guys for tuning into this video. We're gonna be going over the problems one, two, three, and four step by step. And uh, we're going to get straight into it. So for number one, so number one is going to pop up right here and I'm also gonna read it. Three point charges are fixed at the position shown in a semicircle of radius R. The charge of R at theta one is Q1, charge at theta two is Q2. Both Q1 and Q2 are known and positive. The charge in the X axis is known negative, negative Q3. Find the force that would be exerted on the known positive charge Q4 located at the center of the circle. So let me start by drawing this real quick. Okay, so we have that, and then we have a semicircle, and then we have that right there. This is Q1, and then we have right here is negative Q3, and then we have Q2, and then after that, this is theta 2, theta 2, and this right here is theta one and this is the x-axis that's the y-axis and that's it and now we're trying to find the ch stuff located we're trying to find the force located on q4 right there so first we're going to start off with writing the formula so the force formula is f is equal to k Q1, Q2 over R squared, R hat, and it's the magnitude of both, magnitude of both. So you should put the absolute value signs. Is that clear? Okay, yeah, Q1, Q2 over R squared, and then R, R hat. Let me change the marker real quick. And the second formula we're gonna use to find the total force we're going to need the force from one plus two plus three. So that's what we're gonna need. And now we can start off by finding the force on each individual one. So we're gonna start off with the easiest one, negative Q3. So let's find the force of three. F3 is gonna be equal to, K is gonna be the attractive force. So it's going that way and it's gonna be going this way. That's gonna be the force coming attractive. So it's gonna be negative. It's gonna be negative K, because that's the direction. We have Q3, Q4, because absolute value, you take the absolute value. And R is gonna be R, because R is everywhere. So it's a, it's a circle, so R is just gonna be R squared. And we know this is in the I hat X direction. And then we have zero I Y. So now we got our force three. Now we're gonna do F1. F1 is this force right here. So we notice the X component is gonna be the sign. It's gonna be the sign of this right here. If you take it out, it's gonna look like this. So we got theta, we got theta one, and this is gonna be sine theta one, opposite over hypotenuse. This is going to be cosine. So this part is going to be the sine, which is the x-axis. So we're going to start off with the forces. K, we know is going to be, we're going to be, let's see, Q1 to Q4. This is how the force is going to be. It's going to be repulsive because it's the same charge, so it's going to repel off. So the x direction is going positive, y direction is going negative. So x is going to be positive K, Q1, Q4 over R squared. And then for the X axis, you know it's gonna be cosine. It's gonna be sine, so it's gonna be sine theta one I hat X. And then for the Y, it's gonna be negative. So you can just put negative K Q1 Q4 over R squared cosine theta one I, Y. And that is it for F1. Now for the force of two, the last and final one, 
it's gonna be the same exact thing, but this time it's gonna repel this way. So we got positive X and positive Y, positive X and positive Y, which is gonna be K, Q, 2, Q, 4 over R squared. And then don't forget the theta is gonna be the same, sine theta 2, psi theta 2 I X plus K Q 2 Q 4 over R squared cosine theta 2 I Y and then to find the total force we're going to group it all together total force which is going to be the final answer is going to be let's take out the K it's going to be K and then put the brackets we're going to do the ix first we're going to do the ix so it's going to be q1 q4 over r squared plus q2 q4 over r squared plus q Let me see, Q1, Q4 over R squared um, plus Q2, Q4 over R squared sine theta two plus oh, it's Q1, Q4 over R squared. Oh yeah, okay, so it's sine theta one. Yeah, this one has sine theta one, and then this is gonna be minus, it's gonna be minus Q3, Q4, Q3, Q4 over R squared. And this is all in the I hat X direction. This is all in the I hat X direction. Wait, you can't see okay yeah this is all in the i hat x direction that's all in the i hat x direction so now we're gonna go on to we're gonna have to add the i y direction so we're gonna do the same thing k okay let's start off this is zero so we're away from that it's gonna be q2 q4 over r squared cosine theta 2 minus q1 Q4 over R squared cosine theta 1 I hat Y. And that should be the final answer. And let's see. Yep, that is the final answer. The third K is just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We have negative Q1, Q4 over R2 cosine. And then we have plus I, Y. Q1, Q4 over R squared, Q2, Q4 minus Q3. So that's the final answer for number one, and we're gonna move on to number two. Okay, so we're moving on to number two. Number two is gonna pop up right here. Take a screenshot, whatever you need to do, and we're gonna get started. I'm gonna, there's a charge Q uniformly distributed along the X axis from X equals negative A to X equals positive A. To find the electric field at the point x equals s, y equals zero, or s is larger than a. That, let's start by drawing what they gave us. So negative a, and then we have a, and then this is the charge right here, and this is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis, okay? So they want us to find the electric field so let's start off by writing the formula for electric field. E is equal to K Q over R squared. And then when you take the derivative of that, it's going to be DE is equal to K DQ over R squared. So first, we're going to have to take a lambda you have to take a little portion from here, dq. That's going to be called dq. And we're going to name this place x. 
and we're going to use the formula lambda is equal to the length over the unit is going to be equal to the charge over the length so it's going to be q over 2a because that's the length of the whole charge and this is going to be equal to we take the derivative dq over dx so now we're looking for dq so dq is going to be equal to q over 2a dx and we know what r is we know what r is let me see oh yeah we're given this right here x is equal to s at that charge so we're trying to if we're trying to find r r is going to be s minus x so we know r is equal to s minus x that's the distance from here to that charge and now since we have all that we can start with the integration e is equal to integral of negative a to a the whole charge then let's plug in k q q over 2a k q over 2a plugging it into dq times 1 over s minus x squared dx and that is the integral we're going to be setting up so now let's take out the constants it's going to be k q over 2a negative a to a 1 over s minus x squared dx now you take the derivative of that it's going to become k q over 2a is going to be negative 1 over s minus x a to negative a and after that you're going to finalize the answer it's going to be kq over 2a times negative 1 over s minus a minus minus so it's going to be plus 1 over s plus a and this is all in the i hat x direction and this is the electric field at that point and that should be similar to the answer they get in the answer key the answer key just simplified it by multiplying both sides by s minus a and yeah they just simplified both sides by s minus a they cross over they took the they just yeah they just simplified it they just simplified it extra extra but this is also the correct answer for this question now let's move on to number three okay moving on to number three um is going to pop up on the screen right here while I read it. Um, suppose the force exerted on a point test charge Q naught by the point charge Q was given by F equals all that. Where just like the Coulomb force, R is the distance, R is all the Y. Find V1R and find V2R and then find the electric potential if both charges are present. So let's start out by drawing what they gave us right here. They gave us this, gave us that, and then we have this is that. A, B, right there. Let's have A, B, and we're trying to find. So we know where Q1 is going to be. Q1 is right here. That's what they told us at the origin. And Q2, Q2 is going to be right here. This is Q2. And then we have some arbitrary point X. And this is going to be Y. That's an, a random, that's our test charge right there. This is like our Q naught, Q naught right there. That's our test charge. So we're trying to find the electric potential. Let's start by writing the formulas that we're gonna need. Um, electric potential is equal to F divided by Q. So we're given the F. F is equal to C Q naught Q over R six I R. So E is going to be equal to C Q over R6. So first we're going to start off with the other formula we're going to need. 
negative v r2 minus v r1 is equal to the integral of e dot dr. So we're going to start off with trying to find the r's. Let's find the r of the first one. r1, which is going to be this, is just going to be, yeah. R1 is going to be from here to this test charge right here. So we're trying to find the radius. So we know it's x. We know this is y. It's just going to be square root x squared plus y squared. So we know R1 is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now for R2, we know we're trying to find R2, which is going to be from here to here, it's gonna be from here to here. So we're trying to find this distance right there. It's gonna be, Okay, yeah, so for the second charge, our second charge is going to be right here because it's going to be repulsive. So this is going to be our Q naught. So we're trying to find the distance from here to here. So this is going to be our mu x for this point. So since we have that, all we're going to have to do is just subtract a minus x, which is equal to a minus x squared plus y v minus y squared v minus y squared a minus x squared oh y minus v squared y minus v squared plus y minus v squared so that's r2 now since we have all that um, we're going to take the integral now. We're going to take the integral of e. So we're going to get, we're going to do this half, which is equal to the integral of cq over r6 dr, which is equal to the integral of 1 over r6 dr cq. So this is going to be equal to the integral of negative CQ over 5R5. So that is equal to the change in the negative CQ over 5R5. And then if we take this negative to this side, the negative is going to cancel out, and that's going to be positive CQ over 5R5. So now um, to take the potential, take the final potential we're going to do put the plug in the radiuses cq cq1 cq1 over 5 and then r is going to be x squared plus y squared 5 so that's the that's for the first one. That's for the first one right there. V one R. This is V R one. Now for V R two is going to be equal to C Q two over five A minus X squared plus Y minus V squared that and then to the power of five to the power of five so now you have both of them now since you have both of them to find the total electric potential all you're gonna have to do is add them both so let's take out the common denominator it's gonna be C over five and then we can start off with Q1, Q1 
over x squared plus y squared and you can take out the square root and make it half so it's going to be 5 over 2 and then add q2 over a minus x squared plus y minus b squared parentheses 5 over 2 and that should be the final answer for the d x y that should be the final answer for dxy and that's it for number three okay last and final question um the easiest question of the exam by far the flux question is going to pop on the screen right here a surface which has the shape of the block is located one quarter at the origin dimensions of the surface are shown below find the flux of e through the surface of the block if the electric field is given by where alpha and beta are known constants if there is no charge within the blocks how must they be related assuming they are non-zero so let's start off with the top so our formula for this one we're going to be using is flux is equal to e dot d s this is electric field and that's area so we're going to start off with um finding let's run out our let's run out our electric field first electric field is equal to alpha x i x plus beta y i y so we only have x and y coordinates so we're going to start off with the flux for the top is going to be equal to find the perpendicular perpendicular to the to the surface is going to be i y so we know this is going to be i y and the area of this is going to be a c it's going to be a c a c i y dot product we're only going to take it to the i y because i x is just going to equal zero beta y i y which is going to be equal to a c beta y and we know what y is which is equal to a c beta b and that's the flux for the top now we're going to do the bottom the bottom is going to be equal to the same a c i y times beta y i y and it's going to equal to a c beta y but the y at this place is going to be zero so the flux is going to be zero at the bottom. Now we're going to do the front. It's going to be equal to, it's coming out in the IZ direction. And the area is going to be Y equals B and X equals A. So it's going to be AB, ABIZ dotted with alpha X, IX plus beta y i y and i z dotted for both is just going to equal zero because they're not in the same axis so that's going to be zero flux for the bottom is not flux for the flux for the back flux for the back is going to be the same a b and then negative i z times alpha x i x plus beta y i y and it's going to be equal zero also because in the z direction there's no z direction and now we're going to do the right and the left so flux to the left is going to equal to we have y equals b and then we have z equals c so it's going to be b c and it's going to the negative ix direction negative ix and we're only going to dot it to the alpha x ix one so this is going to be negative one it's going to be equal to negative bc alpha x and let's see do you know what x is x at this place is going to be equal to zero because at the origin so this is just going to equal zero 
and then the flux to the right. The flux to the right is going to be equal to BC, BC, IX, because it's perpendicular, is going to go to the right, dotted with alpha X, IX, which is equal to BC, alpha X, which is to BC, alpha A. And that is the final answer for all the sides. And now for the question asking how must alpha and beta be related, all you have to do is add these together and set them equal to each other. So it's going to be AC beta Y plus BC alpha A is equal to zero. AC beta Y is equal to negative BC alpha A. Cross out the C, cross out the A, and cross out the C, cross out the A, and then we're going to, oh, the C's cross out, the B's cross out. There's another B. Alpha C, beta Y, alpha C, beta. Oh, Y is, Y is B. Yeah, we didn't change this to B. Actually, no, it's not this one. It's beta B. Alpha C, yeah, I made a mistake. I was looking at this instead of that. So this Y right here is B. Alpha C, beta B. This is alpha C, beta Y still. So the B, this is the B. So alpha C, beta B. So now the B's cancel. And you're only left with alpha B or beta is equal to negative alpha, which is the answer they get in the answer key. And beta is equal to negative alpha or the same thing, alpha is equal to negative B. It's the same answer. And that's it for number four. And that's it for this exam one. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna make I'm gonna be making exam two zone in a few weeks whenever it's close to our exam. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you're new, like the video and comment down below if this video was informational and see you guys in the next video.